if you launch a rocket at the United States of America or any of our installations globally, I will turn a section of your country into a six foot thick sheet of glass. What is wrong with that? Yeah, I would take a softer approach. Half your Navy might be good to dispense with. Or let's re-invoke the sanctions on Iran. Or let's go ahead and take them out of business in any of their other dealings. Let's not pay them six billion dollars for five people. And then maybe we'll start to send a message that we're not going to take attacks on our bases. We have to let our commanders defend themselves. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do now is start to project the strength that we lost in Afghanistan, a deterrable war in Ukraine. And now here we are with a, a war that should be confined to a country, could go regional, could go global. Yeah, exactly. Well, but at the same time, like, we have the ability. Why are we just twiddling our fingers? That's a great question. I don't, I'd like him to explain that to the American people. I think we deserve an answer. We're putting our sons and daughters and parents and things like that over in Iraq and, and Syria at risk. And we're leaving, we're leaving them undefended, really, yeah. we're, by our will. We're, we have the assets to do it. We lack the will to do it right now. So right. if you're not going to do it, Maybe we should reassess why we're there, maybe bring them home. Or, or maybe those people should go work at Starbucks. I want to take you a listen to what John Kirby, who was like the worst guy in the world at this, he had to say when he was asked about U.S. troops facing further attacks from these proxy groups. Look at this. It is not uncommon after we take a retaliatory strike for there to, to, to be some sort of uh, 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 secondary set of strikes by these proxy groups. Why don't we just eliminate the entire area those strikes came from, and then there won't be a secondary strike? Exactly. This is about cost and position. Yeah. So if we're going to get hit, you don't hit back with an empty uh, warehouse that's got a few bullets and a dog named Rex in it. What you do is you go make a cost and position on who actually attacked you, which is really Iran. Or you decide to reassess whether your forces should even be there, to Darren's point. And, and if they're not there for a good military reason, let's go back to the mm -hmm. 241 Marines killed in 1983. They didn't have a mission. Right. right now, we've got a war in search of a strategy, and we don't have the strategy. Uh, so that's where we are imperiling our forces. That's a, actually a really good point. But the, the bigger problem here, as I see, is it, it's like we're idling. It's, there's, there's no, like, as a mm -hmm. SEAL, we'd go in and we'd expel a massive amount of firepower and resources in a very short time period, because we're a very small group, but we would overwhelm the enemy. Is it time, like, look, I don't want to go to war, but to stop one, you might have to kill some bad guys. Yes, war sometimes is an unfortunate reality and a necessity when the other side is, that's the only language they speak is force. Yeah. So if you're going to speak their language, you better do it overwhelmingly so it can, so it's heard and not misunderstood in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Well, General, this is more geopolitical, but we have a map of the Arab world, okay? So if we could put that up. The Arab world is comprised of a huge swath, all there in yellow. And if you can zoom into that middle part, just upside of Jordan where it says Israel, that is the only area in the entire Middle East that enjoys some version of freedom, democracy, and, and a reasonable protection for their citizens and not, uh, you know, fundamentalist Muslim principles. And yet they're saying that that's encroaching on the entire Muslim world? That's exactly right. And they're an ally of the United States that we should not be deliberating our policies in public on when we debate them. What we should be doing is standing by our ally. Uh, the Eastern Med right now is made up of 50 warships from 11 separate countries. And, and here we are trying to limit what their military activities are, potentially upsetting mm -hmm. uh, and, and interfering in Israeli politics. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, Colonel, the, the Biden administration, they're being warned by you know U.S. diplomats in the Arab world that Biden's <laughs> support for Israel and military campaigns is, quote, losing us Arab politics or publics for a generation. Who cares? Right. Well, yeah, that's the first thing. Who cares? And second of all, the Israelis have heard this many times. Let's go to 48, 1948, 1956, yeah. 67, 73. Every single time the Israelis crush their enemies, yeah. they're told, hey, go back to your original boundaries and let's settle this thing peacefully. Yeah. Next time we promise we'll fix this. And Ukraine, real quick before I let you go. Mm -hmm. You know, we're tie a bunch of Democrats want to tie aid to Israel in agreements, you know, in conjunction with a ceasefire. What about a ceasefire in Ukraine? Like, nobody's calling for that. Nobody's ever called for that. And there's never been one ounce of diplomacy. Especially not Lockheed Martin. <laughs> no, not Lockheed Martin. And there hasn't been one ounce of diplomacy yeah. about conflict cessation the entire time. And yet it drags on. We have a World War I battlefield, and they just want more money to keep it going. Yeah. Well, that's what seems. The, the, our people in Washington measure success by how much money they have torched to get it there. <laughs> right. General Walt, Darren Gobb, appreciate you being here, Bo. Great to be here. Thanks.